lot of you have asked questions about cat scratch optic neuritis, and we elected to devote an entire video to that, so we're going to try to take this topic from top to bottom uh, and go over all the possible questions that could come up from people who think or want to know more about uh, cat scratch optic neuritis. Cat scratch optic neuritis is a form of optic neuritis with the symptoms and the findings that we discussed a few minutes ago. Uh, and it's transmitted through cats, usually kittens, specifically the flea uh, that tends to reside on, uh, on uh, kittens. So you see this most commonly in people who play with kittens, kids. Uh, and it is a form of optic neuritis that occurs usually within one to two, three weeks after the cat scratch. It doesn't, or the flea bite. It can, it can be transmitted by the cat, but it has to be a pretty significant cat bite. Most commonly is transmitted by the flea uh, that resides on a kitten. Cat scratch optic neuritis is not hereditary. It is entirely transmitted by a vector. Uh, there's controversy how to treat cat scratch optic neuritis. Most of the time, the symptoms and signs go away by itself. Uh, this is cat scratch optic neuritis. It's cat scratch disease and it's cat scratch optic neuritis. So let's limit ourselves to optic neuritis. There's, uh, many times if vision is only mildly affected, you don't do anything about it. Uh, sometimes if vision is really severely compromised, uh, steroids, prednisone can be used as well as an antibiotic, but those are few and far between examples where vision is severely compromised. It goes away, most commonly goes away, and vision returns to normal. There may be findings that the examiner sees when they look in the eye, like a scar, but they don't affect vision. Most forms of cat scratch optic neuritis affect the, f the area of the optic nerve within the eyeball itself, and most commonly that doesn't produce pain. It doesn't produce spontaneous pain, in other words, just feeling pain, and it doesn't produce pain on eye movement. How do you treat a cat scratch optic neuritis? It depends upon the severity of visual loss. Sometimes you just follow it and vision returns by itself. You just take a conservative approach to the problem. Other times if vision is severely compromised, uh, there are some who would use antibiotics and even steroids. But to date, there's no definite proof that treatment affects outcome. So most of the time, this is a self-limiting form of optic neuritis and vision returns to normal. The target audience for cat scratch optic neuritis are people who tend to play with kittens. So mostly kids, but it certainly can affect adults. And that doesn't mean that a kid shouldn't play with a kitten or anybody play with a kitten. Uh, it, it's, it's probably a more complicated relationship because all of us have been exposed to kittens and not, not all of us have had cat scratch. So there's some interaction between the host and the flea that results in cat scratch in some people, but you can't go through life avoiding cats and kittens. Usually it causes loss of vision in one eye. Um, sometimes it can cause swelling of the lymph nodes, uh, either in the neck or in the, in the armpit, sometimes in the groin. Sometimes it produces systemic symptoms, fever, malaise, fatigue. Uh, headaches, but most of the time, most of the patients I've seen with cat scratch optic neuritis, it's isolated loss of vision. The flea that transmits cat scratch optic neuritis is basically the cat flea, and uh, the flea bites a person and deposits its fecal material on the skin, and within that fecal material is a bacteria that is called Bartonella hensley. So the doctor who's taking care of a patient with suspected cat scratch obtains a blood test that looks for markers of Bartonella hensley. Okay, we've talked about a pretty uncommon condition, cat scratch optic neuritis. It's uncommon, but it's really important to diagnose it accurately because you want to differentiate it from more serious causes of optic neuritis. I cannot overemphasize the need to dilate a patient with suspected optic neuritis to look for the characteristic findings. Um, and once diagnosed, then 
treatment is basically a decision that's made between patient and doctor, uh, and sometimes with the aid of an infectious disease specialist. So I hope this answers all of your questions regarding cat scratch optic neuritis. Thank you.